Hello and welcome to Dot Plays Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at alkenes and electrophilic addition part two. Uh, so before you do this session, make sure you've done electrophilic addition part one, because we're going to be looking today at a reaction with unsymmetrical alkenes. And today you should be able to explain the formation of major and minor products by reference to the relative stabilities of primary, secondary, and tertiary carbocation intermediates. So we'll be looking at the electrophilic mechanism again, and we'll be looking at what we describe as unsymmetrical uh, alkenes like propene. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the electrophilic addition of hydrogen halides to what we say are unsymmetrical alkenes. And in the first lesson, we, we saw that uh, electrophilic addition reactions went through this thing called the carbocation intermediate. Now, a carbocation itself is usually going to be re pretty unstable because a carbon is really got four electrons itself in its outer shell. And in the intermediate state that we've seen before, it might have had a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and of course another carbon around it. And then we've got a positive charge because there's a lack of an electron on this one carbon. Now, the stability of that intermediate, that carbocation, is going to determine how long it survives for and, and the likelihood of it appearing or, or, or forming. And that positive charge is what is causing the instability. So we can we can make that more stable, that positive charge, by pushing electron density onto the carbon. And how we do that, or how it occurs, is that a methyl group, compared to certainly simple hydrogen groups, is essentially a source of electron donation compared to say chlorine or fluorine or bromine, which is electron withdrawing because of its electronegativity, uh, methyl groups or alkyl groups are going to be electron donating. So in this instance, because we've got one alkyl group, it's stable-ish. So if we come to this second situation here, here you'll see we've got an alkyl group described by the R and a second alkyl group described by the R. And now it's got two groups which are donating electron density onto this carbon, making the carbocation again more positive, or less positive even, and more stable. In the final situation here, where we've got one, two, three alkyl groups, could be methyl groups, ethyls, anything, all donating electron density onto the carbon, reducing uh, the positiveness of that carbon and increasing its stability. I'm just going to remove this drawing at the top. So now, as we go across from left to right, we are increasing the stability of the carbocation. So more methyl groups or more alkyl groups around that central carbocation, the more stable it becomes. These are also named in a particular way. This first one here, if we look at the carbocation, has got one alkyl group attached to it. If it's got one alkyl group, we call it a primary. We can denote that with a one with a degree sign up there. That's our primary carbocation. If we've got two R groups, well, we describe this as our secondary. And the three R groups, well, this becomes, you might be able to guess this, this is tertiary. Or we can describe it with three and our symbol up the top. So our primary carbocation is less stable than our secondary carbocation, which in turn is less stable than our tertiary. So what we're going to now have a look at is see why why that might be important and when that comes.
becomes important when we're looking at, at the possibility of reaction. So let's have a look at our example here with hydrogen bromide, HBr, reacting with propene. We talked about the actual mechanism in, in part one. The HBr is polarizable or is polarized with delta positive on the hydrogen, delta negative on the bromine. And the electrons in the carbon carbon double bond are going to attack the delta positive hydrogen, and the electrons in between those two all go to the bromine, making the hydrogen bromide. But this propene, now if we look, splitting that carbon carbon double bond in half, is now unsymmetrical. On the left hand side we have hydrogen and hydrogen, while on the right hand side we have a methyl group and the hydrogen. And what that means is there's two possibilities of intermediates. We could potentially have a positive thylocation on the right hand carbon, which would leave us the hydrogen on the left hand carbon at the top. Or the other possibility, which is equally as likely to happen, where we have the positive carbon on the left and the hydrogen attached to the right. Now, what we've just described though is above we have a slightly un less likely scenario. Because here we looked at the relative stability of the carbocation, we can see here that on this top example, this carbocation has got one, two carbons, two alkyl groups. So this one at the top is a secondary carbocation, while the one at the bottom here, well, this carbocation here, is only attached to one methyl group or one alkyl group and two hydrogens, and therefore the one on the bottom here is looking at a primary carbon. Well, what does that mean? Well, both situations, we then have the Br- minus left over from the reaction. And another one here. This would go to react with the delta positive here. And this one would go here. The result, of course, is we have here, bromine and a hydrogen, and we form here two bromopropane, two bromopropane, I'll draw that on the second line, so it's all one word, whereas on the bottom example we have a Br on the left, and hydrogen on the right, and this time Instead of two bromopropane, we have one bromopropane. Importantly as well, this bottom example, the one bromopropane, is the minor product, so we would get less of this formed. And the top one, the two bromopropane, is the major product, i.e. we get more of this formed. Don't know the exact values, but we could say perhaps let's say there was 75% was the major product, with 25% being the minor product. You might get that three to one split. It might be much more than that. The reason we have the major product is that the secondary carbocation is more stable than the primary carbocation, and therefore more likely to form the major. So the secondary carbocation intermediate is more stable than the primary carbocation. The same would be true if we had a situation where we had a tertiary versus a primary, a 
and we, we had a choice to make. And that's really important if you want to be able to build molecules where we're trying to put atoms in a very specific position. It allows us to design in such a way that we can say we want to put a bromine on this carbon here rather than that carbon there. And we can produce more of one of those products than the other. Now, this we would observe occurring with HBr. And we could also observe it happen with sulfuric acid to make uh, the alcohol, where the same unsymmetrical alkene situation uh, would, would occur. It doesn't happen when we've got something like Br2 as an electrophile, so bromine on its own. And that's because it doesn't matter if we use if we have two bromine atoms at either end of our electrophile. Well, then we're always going to end up with a dibromo alkane. You can work that one through yourself see for yourself there. The dibromo instance where you've got Br2, you don't get a major minor product because they both end up looking like exactly the same thing. Okay, so at the end of this lesson, the electrophilic addition part two, you should now be able to identify primary, secondary and tertiary carbocation intermediates, but also explain the formation of major and minor products with relation to the relative stabilities of those primary, secondary and tertiary carbocations. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch up with you soon. Bye for now.